When you go to the library, you're usually looking to borrow a book, maybe a CD or something. But for the third year in a row, the West Vancouver Memorial Library is lending out bees to local residents. Participants get to establish their own Mason Bee Colony at home and dip a toe into the world of beekeeping. And for more on this, we're joined by Taryn Urquhart. She's the Arts and Special Events Programmer at West Vancouver Memorial Library. Good morning to you. Good morning, Stephen. Um, Taryn, first off, what are Mason Bees exactly? How are they different from your regular honeybees? Yes, so um, mason bees are a small blue-black bee. Um, sometimes uh, people uh, mistake them for a blue-bottle fly, so you've probably seen one and just not known it was a fly. They're native to Canada. Um, they are a solitary insect, which means they live and exist on their own, something that obviously the honeybee does not do. Um, of course, our bees, our mason bees do not make honey, but they are extremely gentle and easy to raise in your backyard. Uh, and that's why, I mean, I see sort of, uh, I guess, public mason bee um, homes, for lack of a better word, or places that, you know, that would start colonies, sometimes piece, just pieces of uh, board with uh, holes drilled in them at regular intervals. Yes, absolutely. And I'm here to get people excited about Mason Beast, but to also remind the public that as humans, we often jump a little before we know what we're up against. And with a little bit of knowledge, um, Mason Bees are easy to keep, but these houses can become quite hazardous if not looked after properly. Okay, so so tell me about, well, first off, I mean, you're working with the public to be in, bring these bees to our communities. Is this to help in, pop, in pollination? Yes, definitely. So uh, habitat, we're definitely encroaching on habitat. And Honeybees will always be the major pollinator in our food supply, but mason bees are starting to get more recognition and they're starting to be supplement ways of pollination in many of our fruit and berry fields. Hmm. And, and how big a role do they play then compared to honeybees? Yeah, so I will note to the pub, uh, to our viewers, to our listeners today, I am not an entomologist. I've been raising mason bees for 30 years and wow. trying to keep up on um, what's going on. Um, but yeah, we just want to provide really, really healthy habitat um, and also enjoy, uh, you know, add some enjoyment to everyone's backyards. So when I say you can borrow a bee, I mean, what uh -huh. does that mean? Am I literally borrowing a bee from the library? What am I doing here? Yeah, you really are. <laughs> um, my mandate, our mandate here is always to provide the best education. So uh I ask anyone who registers for my course, which unfortunately is over at this time, oh. but you can always contact us and I will sign you up for next year. It is well worth the wait. Um, you come to a one hour lecture. I cover everything you absolutely need to know. And then you go home with a small house that my fine father and I have um, designed. <laughs> uh -huh. It is really a two inch piece of um, drainage pipe and you get everything you need inside. The um, the little tubes that they live in will be included in the house along with some dormant cocoons. Okay. And, and then yeah. what, what happens after that? Yes, yeah, so I call it, join me on a one year journey. <laughs> uh, so uh, this year I have 27 uh, families participating from all ages. I have two high school or young adults uh, and I have seniors. Uh, you learn where to hang it in your backyard or on your balcony up to three stories of like a condo or apartment. Uh, and then I send you newsletters and observations to follow with me throughout the year. Then, Stephen, this is the fun part. Um, in January, I invite everyone back to the library for a cocoon washing party. And yes, it is as, sound, it is as fun as it sounds. Um, we all take our houses apart. We look inside we, and we clean our mason bee cocoons. Oh, okay. You said clean, <laughs> a cocoon cleaning party. Yes, a, co a cocoon cleaning party. So one thing that is so important to get across to the public is to keep our houses as clean as possible. Um, I think we really need to commit to um, keeping any nature that we try to manage um, as healthy as possible. So 
The uh, mason bee lives in a cavity. They can't create their own cavity, so mm. we provide them with tubes. Yep. And they're going to lay their offspring in there and then produce a cocoon that overwinters. And we then open each tube, clean the bee, and get them ready for the next spring. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this is why it's a year in the life of. Exactly, exactly. Oh. Um, and what's been the feedback from past participants, people who have uh, taken a bee home? Oh, you know, everyone has really been loving it. I tend to, as you can sense, get a sense. I get very excited about yeah. this, and I I babble on and on. <laughs> um, but I think uh, the public really appreciates having a resource, kind of a hub that the library loves to provide, um, somewhere where they can go ask questions, mm -hmm. be part of a community of other uh, little beekeepers, and we can ask questions and figure things out. Taryn, it's so good to hear you this morning. Thank you for the time. Thank you so much, Stephen. Have a great day. You too. Take care.